All right. Welcome to Manson Noise Math Lab. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. And uh, let's do this. So as usual, read the question five to a hundred times, always and forever. That's also a note to myself, by the way. Everything I say is also to me, because I forget. I mean, I've missed questions because of that. Damn, that sucks. All right, so this is a situation. Um, let me just talk about what I've written down here, because this should, this should give you an idea of what these, this actuarial stuff is, right? So on-level earned premium trended. <laughs> I went over a video where we on-leveled earned premium. Remember what that is. That is bringing all our historical rates to the current level. We want to restate all our premium so that it's valued at the current rate level, right? I mean, insurance companies, they make rate changes. Historical premium, we've got to restate it so that they've essentially um, thrown in those rate changes. So, on-level earned premium trended. Okay, we made, pre we made trend premium. And I don't have in this question, because it's a very simplified question, but we trend it forward to a future date. Um, usually the, the average written date for a particular period for which we're enacting our rates. So I'll have to get to that later on, but that's what the actuarial stuff comes in. Now we also have our losses and loss adjustment expense, and we're going to trend those forward too as well, right, to a future date. We're making a price in the future date, okay? Um, earned exposures are 8000 Notice these are not dollars. They could be dollars depending on what our exposure base is, but... They also may not be dollars. So 8,000, the variable expense ratio or variable expense provision is 19%. Uh, the fixed expenses are 18,000 and the target profit provision is 5%. So uh, let me link the previous videos up here to the right and so you can go back to the notation there I've written here uh, where it comes from. Uh, part A says to uh, calculate the indicated average rate level change uh, using the loss ratio method. So I gave you a previous video for that. I'll link it up in the right-hand corner. What we need to do is we need to keep, uh, compute the following. Okay, so if I, if I is the average um, rate, uh, the indicated average rate level change, this is equal to our losses plus our uh, L LAE. Okay, we have it all as one right here. That's nice. Um, LAE. Uh, divided by the premium at current rate level, remember that's what we did in the prior video, or the video I'm linking up to the right, plus our fixed expense, and we need to write that as a, as a portion of our premium at current rate level, divided by 1 minus V minus QT. And by the way, more terminology that I'm sure will come up later on, this is typically called the permissible loss ratio, uh, the PLR. So let's plug this stuff in. I mean, we pretty much have everything, right? So the indicated rate level change is equal to the loss plus LAE trended. A lot of times these things are given together. Um, sometimes things are given different ways. ULA may be also given as a percentage of losses. So this is equal to 200,000. I'm just gonna write it as 200 divided by the premium at current rate level. So uh, OLEP trended, so 250 plus fixed expense. This expense was 18,000 uh, divided by premium, which is 250. So everything's in thousands, divided by one minus the variable, which is 0 0.19 minus 0 0.05. Okay, so this should give me a percentage, except for actually I need one more thing, I need a minus one. Minus one. Remember, this is this is literally, I mean, I'm not even kidding. This is what we do on the job a lot of times. I mean, if you're in a pricing role, this is what you do. You literally use this method. So let's plug this in. Okay, I got the TI 30XS multi-view. You know that this thing is basically your life. So this is 200 divided by 250 plus 18 divided by 250 divided by one minus 0.19 minus 0.05 minus one. Make sure you use uh, your parentheses accordingly, of course. And this gives me a answer. This is my answer of, as a percentage, this is equal to 14.7%. Dang it. 14.7%. 0 0.74. 14.74%. Whatever. So what we would usually do, just to sort of side note, so that's my answer, part A is done. 
what we'd usually do if we have some, say, admitted business, business that we'd actually have to um, justify rates to a department of insurance, is we'd submit this number with a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of justification called actual justification as to why we should increase our, our rates at 14.7%. So that takes care of part A. Uh, part B is now do the same thing, but using the pure premium method. So the loss ratio method gives us a percentage. Remember the pure premium method gives us a dollar amount, an actual dollar amount of what we should charge. So the average, using notation that I used before, the average indicated rate change, or the, sorry, the average indicated premium, if you recall, is going to be the losses plus the loss adjustment expense divided by exposures plus the fixed expense divided by exposures divided by one minus V minus Q T. And we were given, oh, we were given exposures. I called this X, earned exposures. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Just plug this stuff in. Easy peasy, right? So this is equal to the same thing as before, 200 divided by now my earned exposures, which are eight, everything's in thousands, plus the fixed expense, 18,000 divided by 8,000. So that's, wait, is it 8,000 or is it nine? Ah, start over. Okay, so yeah, I, uh, this is supposed to be a nine. Actually, it didn't matter for the pure premium method, right? Or sorry, for the loss ratio method. For the loss ratio method, you don't care about exposures. You only use exposures for the pure premium method, so that didn't matter for the first answer. First answer is still right. We're good there. Um, I changed it to a nine, this is 9,000. Okay, so this is going to be 200 divided by uh, 200,000. I have my, my losses plus my LAE trended divided by uh, my exposures, which are 9,000, so this is a nine. And then plus, plus the fixed expense, 18 divided by nine, so this is actually just two, divided by one minus V, 0.09, minus my profit. Now this should give me a dollar amount. So this is my average, that's what the bar is, indicated premium, my average indicated premium. Let's see what we get here. And then I'll show you that these are equivalent, okay? So this is 200, uh, 200 divided by nine plus two divided by one minus 0.19 minus 0.05, 31.87, $31.87 dollars. I really, I guess this is like dollars per exposure, right? So um, now what? I wanna show you now these are equal. So maybe I should write that in the question. I'm gonna put a part C, I don't have it right now, but show that these give you the same number. How can I do that? What I can do, remember what I said before? I gave you a relationship on the video that I have linked up here uh, for the loss ratio method and pure premium method that we know that the premium at current rates is equal to, well, times one plus the indication is equal to the premium that's indicated, that's indicated. So this is an average. How do I get it to not be an average? I can multiply by exposures. So what I'm claiming is that this I, remember what we got for I, what the hell did we get for I? We got 14.7, right? Yes. So what is my premium current? It's 250,000. So 250,000 250, uh, times one plus I is equal to the indicated premium the average indicated premium is that, so this is 31.87. If I multiply by exposures, that will give me my indicated premium. So let's do that. So now let's solve for I. Okay, so I, I is equal to 31.87 times 9,000 divided by 250,000 minus one. This should give me the same thing as before. So let's do that. 
This is, um, I have my calculator save the value there, times 9,000, divided by 250,000, minus 1. This is equal to 14.7%. These methods are equivalent, and it's not even surprising. I mean, one of them you divide by the premium at current, the other one you divide by exposures, you can do some algebraic manipulation to the symbols to get that they're equivalent. But there you go. They're the same. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Um, I'm going to have to expand a lot about a lot of this stuff because there's so much going on. And I again, I wanted to do this because this gives you an idea of the end game. There's a whole bunch of concept that goes into each one of these components, each one of these pieces. But... This is the direction that we're going. This is the motivation for determining all this stuff. All the stuff involved. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. And please like this video.